Indian journalists arrested for hurting Hindu quote unquote religious sentiments. Recently, Mohammed Zubair, a journalist and co founder of India's leading fact checking website, Alt News, was arrested and charged by police for hurting religious sentiments. Zubair, 39, was charged after calling, calling some far right Hindu nuns who called <laughs> Hindu monks who called for the ethnic cleansing of Indian Muslims hate mongers. On other, other news sites report that Zubair was cited for a 2018 tweet that showed an image of a hotel sign displaying the name Honeymoon Hotel, which was then repainted, repainted to Hanuman Hotel, referencing the Hindu monkey god. It was quickly pointed out that these images were actually stills from a 1983 comedy movie. These charges fall under Indian... Penal Code Sections 153A, which means promoting enmity between different groups, and 295A, malicious acts intended to outrage religious feelings. Notably, Zubair was one of the first to share a video of the notorious televised debate involving the now former BJP spokesperson, Nupur Sharma, commenting on the Prophet's child wife, Aisha. Since then, he has been targeted by members of the BJP and right-wing Hindu groups, and many see his arrest as a blatant act of retaliation. In a moment of ultimate irony, on the same day as Zubair's arrest, India, alongside 12 other countries, signed the 2022 Resilient Democracies Statement, a declaration that calls for, quote, guarding the freedom, independence, and diversity of civil society actors and, quote, protecting the freedom of expression and opinion online and offline, end quote. Wow, I, I wish I had a meme for irony so I could just pull it up here right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there is a, there is so much to get into with this news. Oh, and by the way, Armin, I also have stuff that you can show on screen um, that I put in the show notes for this story as well. So there's like, okay, let me break it down how I, I think about it. So let's go through the chronology of events. Zubair posted a video that shows Nupur Sharma making the, you know, quote, supposedly derogatory comments against the Prophet Muhammad. Anyone who knows Islamic scripture will know that they're actually just, she was just stating what's in Islamic scripture. But, you know, here's an infamous tweet where she, he is shaming the, um, the, news, uh, the news company for platforming her, basically. And then because of that, it led to this international diplomatic crises and mass protests and violence and people getting shot and now people getting beheaded, etc. So it's it's snowballed into this massive thing, right? And Nupur Sharma herself has faced so many different police complaints and FIRs across different states. Uh, I think, I can't, I believe she was actually arrested. She was suspended from the party, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Now, people went through his Twitter and dug up old tweets that hurt the religious sentiments of Hindus and then started filing complaints against him. Now, like I said, I have seen some conflicting reporting from uh, journalists. Some say that the tweet that got him in trouble was the fact that he called these people calling from the ethnic cleansing of Muslims hate mongers, saying that that offended their religious sentiments. And then most news agencies that I see talk about how it was because he posted this tweet in 2018 that showed these stills from a movie that showed, yeah, Honeymoon Hotel becoming Hanuman Hotel. Turns out, yeah, it's actually from a comedy. I don't get the joke, but whatever. Um, I, the so, joke, I think, is only the fact that Honeymoon sounds like Hanuman. I think that's the entirety of the joke. Yeah, it's I guess. It's a dad joke. Or maybe, um, maybe it's a dad joke. Or people from India, if there's more to the joke than that, please please let us know in the live chat. Um, so what's interesting about this complaint that was filed against him in terms of this Hanuman Hotel thing, there are some, most, some reports say that it was reported by this handle that only had one or two followers on Monday, like when this was filed. And then some reports say that it was actually filed by a police officer himself. 
Now it's not clear to me, was he the person behind this account? And now this account that filed this complaint against him, like doesn't exist anymore, conveniently. Um, and then there was lots of drama with his arrest. So he's previously had a lot of FIRs filed against him since he started really getting involved with alt news full time. Um, for those who don't know, FIR stands for first information report. It's like an initial complaint that you make to the police and then the police either act on it or they don't. Um, it kind of depends. So he's had a, like a lot of legal troubles of people going after him for years now. Um, and at first when they were saying that, oh, you're, we're like arresting you, he thought it was for a previous FIR that was filed against him in 2020 that he had actually, um, received assurance that he would not be arrested for. And then it turns out that they're like, oh no, it's a different matter entirely. But he, this new FIR quote unquote, that he was being arrested as a result of, he had received no prior notice of, which is actually a violation of due process under Indian law, or that's my understanding anyways. And then his whole, the, the following legal proceedings that he went through with the police happened in an unusually rushed and hurried manner. Like everything was like all precedent of schedule of how things happen are just thrown out the window. They're just trying to process him in, in as soon as possible. Since then he was, like in judicial custody for one day, it got extended to four days. And then as of like a few hours ago, as within the tw last 24 hours, I believe, and then it was now extended to he's going to be in judicial custody for like 14 days. Um, and then in the meantime, they've like tried to slap him with a million other charges. A million is an exaggeration. Numerous other charges. They're alleging that he received money from Syria, and that this is a reason why they're investigating him. And there's all these issues because they want the phone that he originally tweeted this off of, but he that phone was stolen from him years ago. So there's a lot of other details I don't know if we want to get into, but things are not going legally I've, kosher I think in his case. I think they're just trying to send a message that if you do something that the BJP doesn't like, or I don't know, then they're going to try to come at you in every way possible they just yeah. whatever whatever accusations they could make even if they can't prove it in the court of law and they eventually they fail the fact they could still make your life hell and in, in the process like they could get and you institute stuck. a chilling effect upon everyone else yeah like this is a misuse of a country's legal system and it's easy to misuse India's legal system, because first of all, they have stupid laws like blasphemy, like blasphemy laws. I mean, they're technically not called blasphemy laws, but they are blasphemy laws. Yeah, two, and also, two nine five a is a blasphemy law. Yeah, and also because even the good laws that they have, they just the the bureaucracy and the the way the it, it just you don't have to do them by the book, and if you don't do them by the book the process there's not that much penalties for not doing it the way you're supposed to be doing it you know what i mean so there's just opens the hand of abusers to just like ruin your life if they want you by just you know putting you in the system and just like you know what you're not supposed to be in here but find your way out if you can <laughs> like like good luck um so it's just uh i mean it's so sad because in the india is supposed to mature out of this phase um india has so much potential okay and india if he if he manages to come out of this phase it's a country india and nigeria are two countries that have so much potential and they're being held back by religion you know what i mean like economically um and you know geopolitically they could join the liberal other liberal countries you know, and p being part of this alliance of countries that are secular democracies and they respect human rights and the rule of law is respected. And both of these countries are paralyzed because of religion. If they could get out of this phase, it's going to be, it's going to be, there's so much to, to gain from for both for the world and the people within it. So this is why, you know, atheist activism and secular activism is such an important, should be something that, anybody who cares about India uh, should 
prioritize, but it's not that big of a deal yet. I mean, it is, but growing though. So we'll see. I have a genuine question. Hmm. Even if you have sympathies towards the Hindutva ideology, even if you are a right winger, even if you are a BJP supporter or voter or party member, does anyone contend? Does anyone doubt or does anyone repudiate the fact that this is clearly done in retaliation? I think even supporter, I think even right wing supporters would be like, yeah, clearly this is retaliation. Is there any yeah. question? Is there any question? I just saw in the live chat that some Hindutva people were confirming that what you were describing was accurate. So even our Hindutva okay. followers were, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's the point I want to make. Like everyone is just, okay, so this is just open retaliation now. This is just open retaliation against a journalist for tweets for four years ago. Okay. Like, I'm glad that we all agree that we can just see what's in front of our eyes. For once, I'm not being freaking gaslit, okay? You're not seeing what you're actually seeing is usually what I get. But now we're all in agreement. Cool. So, okay. um, uh, Forever Stormy is saying, I look at Turkey and I see India's future, a nation that was full of hope that is now pretty much dead. Do you want to respond to that? Um, I don't think it's... Um... I don't I think India is going to it has a very bright future okay eventually it will grow out of all of this um it's just a matter of is it going to be slow or fast but mm. the the future is bright the future is bright for every country in especially India okay mm -hmm. but how fast we get there that's the question um so some you, other people yeah. in the live chat were explaining the joke to us which I appreciate. <laughs> so, um, uh, something I don't remember is saying, oh wait, no, no, no. The joke is that Hanuman is, is an aesthetic and honeymoons are not for aesthetics. And Beep Boop is saying the joke was that, um, Kandupa India honeymoon hotels name will change to the Hanuman hotel for decency reasons. So that's one theory of the joke. And Forever Stormy is saying Hanuman is celibate. So equating them him to a honeymoon is why they got offended. Um, Hanuman is celib. That's so sad. That must be one horny yeah. monkey. And monkeys are already horny. <laughs> oh my god, that's dangerous. Let that okay. let that monkey do what it wants. Like let them. Who decided <laughs> that he has to be celibate? It's called Somebody. doing the monkey business for a reason. <laughs> yeah what the hell monkeys who don't monkeys who don't okay i can't say what i want to say on youtube but but monkeys like how is he not has not lost his mind already he's a monkey come on like somebody somebody go and give this man oh not a man somebody go and give this monkey a blowjob or something Can I oh my god <laughs> okay <Wait>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you know what you know what hanuman needs hanuman needs a, a hanulingam Okay, start Hanu lingams across India so people could rub it so that he, the, the monkey could feel a thing. Poor guy, I feel bad now. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, here's what the police had to say about this, you know, super offensive, you know, image he posted. Quote, these words in the picture found to be used by Muhammad Zubair against a particular religious community are highly provocative and more than sufficient to incite feelings of hatred amongst people, which can be detrimental for maintenance of public tranquility in society. Highly provocative and more than sufficient to incite feelings of hatred. Okay, what's ironic is that this... Um, this film that he took these stills from is still publicly available everywhere on the internet and you can even watch it on youtube so they're not going after that they're not trying to push indecency charges against the people who posted that they're not trying to get twitter in youtube to strike down that like they were doing with twitter it, it's just so it's so blatant they just don't even mm. like there's no attempt to even make it seem legitimate like um swamp nil is pointing out the section of the ipc that one of his charges was filed under section 295a if you were wondering what one of india's most serious penal codes is 
technically this is the same for Bangladesh and Pakistan as well. It's 295A. Mm. This is a holdover from the British. Um, and Armin and I would be very familiar with this because we have both had FIRs filed against us also citing 295A. Yes. We're you amongst know, good company. We're amongst good company. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. The pe- a lot of people say, like, this is not, you can't blame Hinduism from, uh, for this. This is a blessing we saw that was given to India by the British. Okay. Because and that's a fair of, point. Because of and, murders that happened because of blasphemy against Islam. Yes. And also, where did the British get this from? Okay. I mean, the British are to blame. Okay. But the British went to the Brahmins and were like, show us your laws. Okay. And they were like, well, we have the many Smriti. So it came out of Hinduism. Okay. So everyone's to blame. We can't be like, oh, don't blame Hinduism. Blame the British. I was like, I, I will blame both. <laughs> I about both. Anyways. Um, so something else I wanted to talk about today is um, there has been the Supreme Court commented on what Nupur Sharma did. And I mean, it just happened within the past 24 hours. And honestly, I think it deserves its own segment that we'll probably cover next week. Um, but I have come to the, uh, the, <laughs> the only correct opinion on this, Armin. The only, the only, the only based and correct opinion on this. Okay. Because oh. the Supreme Court essentially said that Nupur Sharma is to blame. They blamed her for everything that happened in the country after what she said. A lot of people blame Zubair for the beheading of the Hindu tailor Kanhaya. Okay. Okay. Here, here's the, here, here's the correct opinion. Muhammad Zubair is not to blame for these things. Nupur Sharma is not to blame for these things. Neither of them should have been arrested. Neither of them should have charges filed against them for what they've said in this matter. In fact, this blasphemy law should be repealed altogether. How about that? How about how about that's the good consistent position to take? I just gave you guys the correct opinion. Yes, that that is the correct opinion. However, should I be sh- um, maybe the filing of um, the charges filed against her were, were wrong? Okay. Um, however, some people are like yeah, but her firing was not wrong. Is that fair? Yeah, that's that's a to- I feel like that's a totally different matter. That's like yeah, the okay. the the political party is at will to work with whoever they do or do not want to work with. Whether I think it's mm. completely ridiculous for them to suddenly call her a fringe element when she was mentored in 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 nurtured by the home minister amit shah himself i think that's ridiculous but yeah they can do whatever they want if they want to work with her or not um, by the way some people in the live chat were saying that uh, hinduism doesn't have blasphemy laws hinduism definitely is anti-blasphemy and the blasphemy the punishment for blasphemies are like extreme I have seen Hindu scripture, both old and new, that is anti, extremely anti-blasphemy. I don't know if you guys have read your own religious scripture. Maybe like you should, this is why I'm here to teach Indians and Hindus about Hinduism because you guys are seem to be unaware about your own culture, okay? So I, as a foreigner, I'm here to help, to reintroduce oh you. In fact, I will do a video on this. I will do a video about blasphemy laws within Hindu scripture for you guys, so you guys could learn something about India and Hinduism. You're welcome. Um, Brian Bradley but- is saying blasphemy laws should have zero place in 2022. 100% agree. Real ass Indian liberals will agree. The real ones. And D is saying, how about we just blame the beheaders for this? Yeah? Yeah, I like that. How about we hold the people who take violent action against people and property accountable for the crimes that they've done. Not for people saying whatever, whatever about so-and-so's religion. That's lame. That's for children. Okay. If you're damaging people or property, let's have a conversation. Hmm. Anyways. Okay. So people are saying, uh, Kanya Baba is saying, oh, how pure Susanna to not recognize the Zubair's jihadist intentions. I mean, that comes across as you being very, um, I don't, I, I, you know, the way, the fact that you're talking about it like this makes it very, I would be very skeptical about 
your narrative of this being very true. But here's the thing: even if you guys agree, even if there's like, like let's this, let's say this guy is a secret jihadi, okay? Can you be like, okay, arrest a man, prove the do the do the due process, okay? Uh, and then prove that this guy had a jihadi intentions, and then book him for that, okay? Can you not agree at the same time that arresting a man for blasphemy is wrong? But if you could prove that this man had jihadi intentions in the court of law with evidence while he could defend himself with a lawyer, then sure, then arrest him for that. These are not contradictory. Okay. And while he's in prison for whatever jihadi intentions that you think he had had, he shouldn't get additional prison or any anything else extra for blasphemy. Like, can you can you condemn that at the same time? Like, yes, arrest this man for jihadi his jihadi intention, but blasphemy laws are insane. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, there now that he's been arrested and there's all these investigations happening, people are talking about payments he received from Syria and Pakistan. He's contending that that was money received to his company. The details on that weren't clear at this point, so that is something I want to follow up on because that did signal a red flag to me. I'm like, wait a second, what? I don't so, think that's red flag. I'm willing so, to okay. be critical of him. Okay, I, okay, maybe he's guilty, maybe he's innocent, but I could totally see that for a lot of, uh, people who are tend to be bigoted money coming from oh money coming and from an islamic country must be a jihadi okay hey, hey guess what i got money from iran okay my dad used to send me money okay so what does that make me does that make me a jihadi <laughs> right like you know I, I just think like to a lot of people's minds like oh funds out of syria that's all i need to hear jihadi confirmed that's all the information they need. By the way, we just got a $20 uh, donation. Thank you. Anonymous donation of $20. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. That's so kind. Yeah. Yeah, this is a heated story. There's a lot we could get into. People Make are sure. calling him a... I hope, a, it's, a, I hope it's not out of Syria, that donation. <laughs> like, take it back if it's from Syria. But yeah, go Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Yeah, oh, there's so much we could get into here still, like especially with the reactions from the live chat. There's so much we could get into. Um, yeah, but we're just gonna leave it on that. I'm going to be doing um, <laughs> um, uh, doing more of a deep dive into these details, and I'm also perfectly willing to go back and correct myself on anything I got wrong. Um, Is there the Instagram so post you don't want me to? Uh, at this point, no, um, because it, it was just examples of more tweets that he got um, that was part of his, you know, allegations of hurting um, religious sentiments. Um, mm. But the main All one right. was the Hanuman one. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.